Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Deep Jyoti Mahanta from studyinggeology.com and today we are about to discuss a topic from metamorphic petrology. Since this topic is very important from entrance point of view, if you have any doubts after the completion of the video, don't hesitate to comment it down. Also, if you want to join our telegram group, I'll put the link in the description. So without wasting much time, let's start with the topic. So Barovian sequence is a sequence of minerals which are found in the regional orogenic belts. Okay, that means the places where mountain building has occurred. So this was initially or you can say this was uh, figured out at the first by uh, British geologist. His name was George Barrow. So George Barrow was a bit British geologist who figured it out and while he was working in the Scottish Highland. So before going to the sequence, let us understand some geotectonic history of the Scottish Highland. So Scottish Highland uh, formed as a part of Caledonian Orogeny and the Caledonian Orogeny occurred nearly 1000 million years ago but its maximum intensity or you can say maximum peak was observed 500 million years ago. Uh, this paleo continents, as you can see on the left hand side, Laurentia and Baltica on the right side, they collided due to convergent forces and which led to the closing of the Iaptus Sea or you can say Iaptus Ocean. So due to the convergence of Laurentia and Baltica, the sediments of the Iaptus Sea as well as the oceanic crust was compressed, deformed and metamorphosed. Okay. So, because of this metamorphism, deformation, as well as the convergent forces, these uh, sediments as well as the rocks got uplifted due to the convergent boundary as uh, convergent forces, as you can see in the diagram. Also, you can see uh, the Baltic plate, or you can say the Baltic plate, subducted below the Laurentia plate, which led which led to the further increase in the height of the Caledonites. So these are the Caledonites which formed as a conversion motion of the two plates. Uh, since conver uh, the subduction is always associated with some kind of volcanism, there will always be a granitic intrusion at the end of an origin. Always remember that when there is an origin, there will always be a granitic intrusion at the end at the end stage of the origin. So as you can see, uh, the sediments uh, and the oceanic uh, lava or you can say the mafic rocks got metamorphosed due to these compressional forces and led to the formation of the Caledonites. So, and these Caledonites were later again rifted apart due to plate tectonics. Okay, so the present day Caledonites, uh, presently the Caledonites are present in the parts of Greenland, uh, Scandinavia, then your North America, and as you can see, Scottish Highland. So, Scottish Highland is a part of uh, UK. Now, let's move further to the topic. So, as you can see, uh, this diagram or this map shows the mountain ridges which were formed as a part of the continent or oceanic. That means, convergent boundary. There might be it might be continent ocean convergence it might be continent continent conversion you can also see the himalaya here himalaya which form because of the north north east movement of the indian plate towards the eurasian plate and this which led to the formation of the himalayan mountain ranges so among all of them uh, the himalayan mountain range is the youngest one because it's 40 to 50 million years old Okay, so this Barovian sequence was later observed in other orogenic belts as well. So that's why this the sequence of minerals which were which we are about to study were named on the name of George Barrow. Now let's talk about the rocks that were present in the study area of George Barrow. So there were many sandstones, conglomerates, shales, limestone, and mafic lavas. Uh, and George Barrow saw changes little changes in the sandstone but he noted most of the changes in the palytic rocks by palytic rock i mean the rocks we have uh, which includes uh, salt and clay that means you will be having sail claystone mudstone this kind of rocks in under the palytic rocks okay so george Perron noted most of the changes in the palytic rocks 
so he he could see that uh, he could subdivide the area into us into a series of metamorphic zones uh, and each metamorphic zone was named on the basis of the appearance of a new mineral with the increase in grade okay so every new mineral that appeared with the further movement was named as an index mineral this this thing can be understood in a uh, small cartoon which i'll try to draw so imagine this is a this is the scottish highland and george barrow started his geological work here so he since there were other rocks as well like mafic lavas and uh, conglomerates uh, sandstones but he his study was major uh, he, he was mainly concentrated onto the palatic rocks so imagine these are the palatic rocks of the scottish highland so when he was moving from this to this side from right to left he saw that the these palatic rocks contain few minerals and the first mineral he observed uh, was known uh, he said that that mineral will be called index mineral for example as you can see in the sequence so in the beginning or the starting of the palatic rocks the palatic rocks he saw the first mineral he could identify from the palate that palatic rock was chloride so that's why he said that the the chloride will be our index mineral and the zone where chloride is present we'll call that zone as chloride zone okay it's not like that that palates only contain chloride but there were other minerals as well as you can see here that it can uh, it contain this chloride zone included muscovite quartz as well as albite so the type of palatic rocks uh, he saw here were slates and phyllites okay as you can see it's written here so the type of palatic rock he saw were slates and phyllites and the minerals he could observe were chloride muscovite quartz and albite since he could identify the chloride first that's why the name was given on the basis of the first mineral that means the chloride zone then when he further moved again towards the left he saw that the new the the palatic rocks here included a new mineral and he could identify it as biotite so with the in he saw that the new mineral biotite was being added now but it wasn't present in the earlier palatic rocks so he said that now the index mineral will be biotite and the zone will be named on the basis of the index mineral so this zone was your biotite zone and the type of palatic rocks were uh, phyllites and cysts that means slates were metamorphosed with a further increase in pressure temperature to provide uh, to give away to phyllites and cysts and the minerals were biotite, chloride, muscovite, quartz, and albite. We will try to learn this, or we will try to remember this uh, minerals uh, after some time uh, with a few uh, with the uh, next slides. Okay. So similarly, he found uh, then he found uh, garnet in the uh, next peltic rocks, then uh, storolite, then kyanite, then sillimanite. So on the basis of this, he named the zones on the basis of the new minerals that he found that were the index minerals he named the zone and and the garnet zone included the peltic rocks were cysts and we, and it included the red almandine garnet okay so almandine garnet is an iron rich garnet which has formula fe3 al2 si3 o12 okay then after the garnet zone he found storolite zone which also in, uh, uh, which also shows that the peltic rocks were cysts okay then kyanite zone and sillimanite zone when he reached sillimanite zone what happened cysts and gneisses were present that means as you can see the grade of metamorphism the grade of metamorphism that means the pressure and temperature were increasing as well as the minerals were also changing so as you can see the sequence is the sequence is c b g s k s that means chloride zone biotite zone garnet zone storolite zone kyanite zone and sillimanite zone so in the chloride zone you have chloride as the index mineral in the biotite zone you have biotite as the index mineral in the garnet zone you have garnet as the index mineral then storolite then kyanite then Selenite. These are the index mineral. 
ओके इंडेक्स मिनरल्स बट वन इंडेक्स मिनरल कैन ऑल्सो बी प्रेजेंट इन द जोन ऑफ अदर इंडेक्स मिनरल फॉर एग्जाम्पल क्लोराइड इज प्रेजेंट इन द बायोटेज जोन एज वेल एज द गार्नेट जोन बट क्लोराइड स्टार्ट टू डिसअपियर फ्रॉम द स्टोरोलाइट जोन बिकॉज द क्लोराइड cannot withstand the increase in pressure and temperature condition so it disintegrates to form some new mineral so that means chlorite can exist in garnet biotite uh, biotite as well as garnet zone similarly biotite can also exist in garnet zone storlite zone and kyanite zone so this is the barovin sequence and as you can see this is the map of the area where george barrow worked as it's written here this dotted this area is represented by chlorite this area is represented by biotite this area is represented by garnet this area is represented by kyanite and this area is represented by selenite so in the barrows area since it is a narrow area as you can see it's a, it's a smaller area than the other one he could observe all the all the different different minerals in the same zone okay in the same area in the rock uh, in the pelletic rocks of that area so he could easily map them and subdivide the area into different different minerals okay so i hope you understand the barovian sequence but there are few more terms like isograde uh, this isograde term was originally coined by tile after the uh, barrow okay so barrow barrow give uh, barrow gave us this zones like chloride zone biotite zone garnet zone storolite zone kyanite zone and selenite zone as you can see i have drawn i have tried to draw the zones here and the the difference okay the line as you can see the boundary between the chloride and biotite this is a boundary where chloride and biotite both can occur together that means this is the area where george found the biotite that means biotite starts to pre, uh, starts to appear in the upcoming pelletic rocks similarly this is the area or this is the boundary where garnet starts to appear in the pelletic rocks then this is the uh, line where again storolite starts to appear so the, he called these lines as the uh, isograts okay iso as you, as you all, are, all know iso means same great means Grade represents grade is representing the grade. That means same grade in the isograde. Okay, these lines he said. Tilley said these are the isograde, and he also named them. This this isograde was named as biotite isograde because this is the place where biotite was first introduced in the pellets. Then this isograde was named after the garnet garnet mineral. So this was garnet isograde. Similarly. Uh, you have uh, storolite isograde kyanite isograde then you have selenite isograde okay so in the isograde you have chloride in in the biotite isograde you have chloride and biotite occurring together similarly in the garnet isograde you have biotite and garnet occurring together okay so the barovian sequence represents a progressive kind of metamorphism as i can say it represents a progressive nature of the metamorphism that means there is a increase in pressure and temperature and, and also which represents uh, the increase in the high grade minerals so i hope you understand the concept of index mineral you understand the concept of the zones and you understand understood the concept of the isograds so let me revise once again so this index mineral were named on the basis of the first appearance that means if in a pelletic rock the first mineral he could the george barrow could identify it and on the basis of that mineral which the mineral that can be identified first was given the title of index mineral and the zone was named on the basis of index mineral okay so that was done by george barrow secondly tile said that the boundary between the two zones can be said as a isograde that means two two uh, zones are occurring together in a uh, similar pressure temperature condition so he said between the chloride and biotite zones we will be having biotite isograde that means where chloride and biotite can occur together similarly in the garnet zone biotite and garnet can occur together okay so i hope you understood understood this uh, uh, barovian sequence uh, the index mineral 
the isograde and the mineral assemblage let me let me tell you how to remember this in the chloride zone as i said chloride zone has chloride which is the index mineral obviously it has to be present then we have muscovite quartz and albite okay so when you move from chloride to biotite zone the biotite will be added right so biotite is here then rest of the minerals are same as you can see in the sequence chloride is present muscovite, muscovite quartz and albite but due to increase in temperature the albite which is a sodium rich plagioclase which is a sodium rich plagioclase it won't be able to survive so it will try to change into a calcite, calcic, calcium rich version of itself okay so this albite will try to change into a calcium rich plagioclase that will be oligoclase similarly when you move from biotite to garnet zone obviously garnet will be added plus the other minerals are same biotite chloride muscovite quartz so it's pretty easy to remember right it's not that hard again the there will be uh, oligoclase or you can also write plagioclase no problem because they will it will try to continue the plagioclase series with further increase in temperature the amount of calcium will be increasing because calcium plagioclase as you can say the end member is anorthite so calcium plagioclase can stay in high temperature than the albite or sodium rich plagioclase similarly when you move from garnet zone to storolite zone storolite will be added and the rest of the minerals will be same except there will be one thing as as you can see in this uh, line i have written plus minus chloride that means from storolite zone the chloride may may stay or may not that means the chloride will become unstable and some of the chloride may be there but it will be it will try to disintegrate into some other minerals because it cannot withstand that particular pressure temperature condition okay when you move from when you when you move further you get kyanite zone so when you reach kyanite zone the kyanite will be added plus other minerals will be there okay other minerals will be same and when you reach sillimanite the sillimanite will be added but you may may or may not find kyanite because kyanite sillimanite as you can as you know that kyanite and the lucite and sillimanite these are the three polymorphs of al2si5 that means all of them are polymorphs that means they have same chemical composition but their structure is different so kyanite can exist in high pressure condition sillimanite can exist in high temperature condition and andalusite can exist in low pressure and low temperature condition so if you move from kyanite to sillimanite zone this kyanite may transform from this side to this side that means it is going under polymorphic transformation to change into sillimanite so some of the kyanite may stay but the most of the kyanite will be converted into sillimanite similarly other other minerals like garnet biotite muscovite quartz and plagioclase may stable may be uh, are stable and storolite may or may not stay just like kyanite so it's pretty easy to remember i guess then now we have to talk about the pressure temperature condition like this barovian sequence what kind of pressure temperature is represented by barovian sequence after barrow Pentia Scola, another geologist who brought the concept of metamorphic phases, used the concept of Barovian zones uh, to define his uh, phases series. He divided the phases series mainly into three parts high pressure phases series, medium pressure phases series, and low pressure phases series. So he said that the Barovian zones are, as he changed it later into Barovian phases series, belong to medium pressure condition okay that means barovian zones or the barovian sequences are found in the medium pressure kind of sequences okay so this escola used the penti escola used the uh, concept of barovian sequence in his concept of metamorphic phases we'll try to uh, make another video on the phases series and the phases of uh, metamorphic rocks in another uh, episode so i hope you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that uh, there is encouragement for me to make more videos and also share with your friends so that they can understand this uh, the concept of bear of sequence as well thank you